this next patient um, is um, a very uh, challenging, hopefully um, not too uh, disconcerting in that she's uh, 45 uh, and has had significant weight loss and abdominal pain. And by her MRIs uh, done outside, there's a suggestion that she might have something in her pancreas. She's got a strong family history of pancreatic when I say strong, she's, her mother passed away from uh, liver uh, and pancreatic, or pancreatic cancer that had metastasized to the liver. Uh, and uh, she's had significant back pain. She's had chronic back pain for many years in her life. However, in the last uh, uh, several months, the character of her pain has changed to where it's more in the left upper side uh, and she's unable to eat and she has an elevated, markedly elevated CA-19-9 which is a tumor marker. It's the sensitivities and specificities aren't great for pancreatic cancer. However, when it's so highly elevated, such as in her of about 600, we worry that in, uh, in fact there might be a, a cancer uh, in the pancreas. Um, imaging such as MRI and CT scans very good for picking up tumors. However, endoscopic ultrasound is the most sensitive modality for detecting pancreatic masses, especially when they're less than two centimeters. So in, right now we're looking because I don't know what we're going to find. So now that we've established that there is a mass, we will go ahead and pass the biopsy scope or the linear scope that has Doppler capabilities. Again, intubating, uh, one must use caution to uh, not perforate the upper esophagus, especially in the... Uh, elderly, which so many of our patients for cancer staging are uh, older. So these are, uh, I'm now uh, into the body of her pancreas and we get to the, uh, here's her aorta, this is her adrenal gland right here, called this is a Texas longhorn shape or a seagull. This is the left adrenal gland. This is the cruise of the diaphragm and this is the aorta. Um, and you can see the left kidney. Mary, if you just put some alcohol swab on this thing. Uh, that's the left kidney right there. So she does have some evidence of adenopathy right here uh, and uh, we may or may not decide to do a fine needle aspiration of that. She's got actually very large nodes and, and now that I am studying this, gosh, it would be really nice if... Uh, if this is a lymphoma um, because of these pronounced lymph nodes so it would be a far better prognosis for her if this ended up being a lymphoma the only thing clinically that argues against a lymphoma is that CA199 level being up so high uh, which would be more consistent with an adenocarcinoma and not a lymphoma um, so I'm back in the head area this is most of the FNAs are performed now with the scope in the duodenal bulb and that's where I'm at right now and here is the mass uh, which is evident right here I think I inadvertently hit a wrong button so I'll remeasure here For our scopes, um, we find it best uh, if the sheath length is adjusted to approximately one. Uh, it may vary depending on your endoscope, but somewhere in the range of 0 0.5 to perhaps three on the sheath. The echo needle has a nickel-plated brass lure lock 
um, that offers a solid connection to the biopsy port of the echoendoscope. This feature uh, offers more stability uh, even with multiple passes. Now, um, Cook has come out with several um, different needles, uh, the Echo 322 uh, and the Echo 122. I personally uh, prefer the Echo 322 uh, over the um, uh, 122 because it offers a coiled sheath uh, and this enhances flexibility, especially in lesions uh, that might be uh, uh, lesions that require torque on the scope uh, and because of that torque uh, you would really uh, favor having uh, increased flexibility uh, with the spring tip and, and that's the instances where I use that. I've got a fairly nice position right here. I do see arterial structures anterior to the mass. I'm just magnifying here. We can Doppler uh, prior to uh, performing the biopsy and the structure right above the mass uh, I presume is the uh, gastric uh, uh, duodenal uh, artery. Here's a lymph node right there and the mass again and that's the portal vein with the flow so uh, one can appreciate that this mass is completely compressing against or on the portal vein. It's a lymph node and the mass again. There's no harm in going after the lymph node. We'd like to uh, biopsy the mass first if possible. Have that gastroduodenal artery right over. Here's another lymph node, uh, and these look quite ominous. They're large, fairly round, and well demarcated. All signs of possible malignant invasion. Let's just go for it. Okay, that's good. So appreciate there's flow right above the mass and uh, we will like to avoid that if possible. I'm just going to check to see which plane. So my needle's coming right where that artery is so I'll have to that's not, that's not bad right there. Okay. Are you going to be able to we could probably maybe do it without suction. I'm going to uh, perform the first pass Without, can you can do it. We'll still do it without suction though. Just push in just a little bit. So Mary, our nurse, is actually pushing the scope gently into the patient. And you can see the needle, and I went right in. It's fairly soft, which is somewhat uncharacteristic for pancreatic masses. Um, there's a chance that all this could be lymph node material. Go ahead. So the needle's in, and now she's inserting the suction that's been, okay. I'm just going to magnify a little bit, and you can see the needle going in and out of the patient here. That's the portal vein sitting right behind us, and so we'll avoid that. And probably do about 10 to and fro motions in order to get a sample and we also look in our syringe um, to make sure there's no blood that's uh, returned. It's not a major deal if we do see blood we just stop and pull out uh, with that pass. Turn the suction off and the needle's back. So that constitutes one FNA pass so in the process of coming back uh, to evaluate that abnormal lymph node, I ran across this hypoechoic round structure in the liver. I'll try to mark this for you. It, it measures right here. So this lesion measures right at about a centimeter. 
And uh, you say, well, how do you know this is, represents a metastatic spread versus normal liver? And uh, it's one of these things that y you don't see something that looks like that. A, a tumor spread, it can be hypo or hyper. And in fact, I'm seeing something that's closer to the edge for me to biopsy. Uh, perhaps you can appreciate it as well. It's right here. So this is one, the first thing that hit my eye, and then this area is, the, is right near it, and this should be easier uh, to biopsy, and it's in the left lobe of the liver and the lateral edge, and a good endosonographer should look in every case that, the, that he or she does uh, in the setting of pancreatic or esophageal, and uh, there's several nice case series, the largest published by Dr. DeWitt. Uh, John DeWitt out of uh, Indiana, um, where uh, it was a multi-center, and they looked at their experience in pancreatic cancers uh, of uh, liver lesions that had been biopsied, and I'm seeing several, so I'm really becoming convinced uh, that these really represent metastatic foci. Clinically, the implications of this would be that she's got metastatic pancreatic cancer, uh, and that would uh, obviate the need for any surgery uh, and she would be in a palliative mode. This is a 25 gauge needle. I personally use the 25 gauge needle if I'm um, uh, somewhat concerned about increased bleeding um, or clots, uh, perhaps a very vascular lesion such as a gist um, and so a smaller needle potentially offers you uh, the same specimen but with less bleeding. Uh, that's why I use the 25 gauge in the liver because uh, it is a very vascular organ and, and that might prevent uh, further bleeding as well. Um, the other thing that I found is that uh, despite using a smaller 25 gauge needle, I, I've never really seen any uh, sacrifice or I've never seen any decrease in visibility. In fact, the visibility is just equal or as good as the 22 gauge needle and when you look at the specimen uh, the quality and the amount of uh, the specimen that one obtains is pretty much equal to the 22 gauge needle uh, with the caveat being that perhaps perhaps there's less bleeding and that's a good thing.